Welcome back everyone to version 2.0 of the Knee Pit Gaming Career Experience. And hopefully by now you've had a chance to check out the very first overview video for version 2.0, which detailed changes made to the drivers for hire and the driver training system. I wanted to do a separate video for that simply because it was part of the original functionality of the career experience. And I wanted to show you guys exactly how that had changed here in version 2.0. And in this video, we're going to be going through all of the new areas for version 2.0 and talking about all the new functionality. We're going to go one by one through each of the new sheets, talk about why it's here, what it accomplishes, and some of the options that it gives you. Version 2.0 of the career experience is going to give us the ability to simulate race results for a full field of cars. And then we can take the next step and simulate an entire season for a full field of cars. That means we're going to be able to track points race by race, see our position in the series, and then ultimately crown a champion. But it goes well beyond that in how we make all this happen. And that's where all of these new areas of the spreadsheet come into play, starting with the manufacturers and teams. If we're going to generate race results for a full field of cars, then we're going to need a lot of teams and manufacturers to compete in these series. And that's what our manufacturers and teams tab gives us. There is a list of teams, a list of manufacturers, and then we get into team performance and our point system. Let's actually start over to the far right with our point system. This is the point system taken from NASCAR that will be used in all of the series within the sheet. So be very careful about making changes here. Obviously, you are free to make any changes that you would like to the way the point system is allocated, but just be aware that it will affect all of the series within the career experience. Next, we get to the team performance. There are a total of 30 levels here. This operates very much like the driver levels that we saw in the original career experience. That has now been expanded upon to where the teams also have different levels. And each level is associated with a different performance level from 100 down through 10. And you're going to see that level of performance under your starting performance for each team. Now, under each team, I have listed as many teams as I reasonably could. Uh, there are a lot of teams from the NASCAR divisions. You'll also see teams from the IndyCar division, as well as some dirt teams as well. And then you'll notice default teams. And that's because I wanted to give you as many options as possible. So if you're running a particular series, which maybe doesn't have any well-established teams, maybe it's a fictional series, then you can choose to either have no teams at all and leave them blank, which we'll talk about more here in our next section, or you can fill the roster with default teams if you so desire. But each team not only has the team name, but you're going to have a manufacturer associated with each team. And in the middle of the screen is our list of manufacturers. Again, there are manufacturers listed for many of the series within the career experience. And then there are also generic sponsors here as well. Not only do we have the names for manufacturers, but we also have performance for each of the manufacturers. And again, we're going to go into more detail about that here very shortly. So each team has the name, the manufacturer, their starting performance level, and then a default driver level. So each team obviously can have their own drivers, just like in real life, or you can choose to leave that area blank and the default driver level will take care of driver performance. That's right. There are three different types of performance and each of them will affect your overall performance in each of the races and of course overall in the seasons. You'll have team performance, manufacturer performance, and driver performance. But how does all of that flow together? Well, let's take a look at that right now. 
Now that you've determined which teams and which manufacturers are going to compete in a particular series, whether they are default teams that I have provided or you've added your own teams and manufacturers, the next step is to set up each series. We need to determine which teams will compete in which series. And that's what we're going to use the series relative performance sheet for. So again, you can see at the bottom of the screen, series relative performance is located just after the 10 series tabs. That's where we'll find series relative performance. And here we're going to see a total of 10 series listed. Now, by default, I have entered in some of the more popular series into these areas, but feel free to change any of these simply by changing the numbers here at the top and fill them with your own teams. So again, as many options as possible is always my goal. Now today we're going to look at the very first one as an example, but all 10 of these will work the same way. And in order to do that, we need to expand each series. And the way we do that, for those of you who might not be familiar with Excel, you'll see these plus signs along the left-hand side of the screen. These plus signs will allow you to expand as well as collapse each of the individual areas just to make viewing a little bit easier. So right now, I'm going to expand series number one, which is the NASCAR Cup Series. Now that we have that expanded, you can see we have a total of 40 slots available for 40 cars total in any particular series. And as I mentioned, I have already pre-filled this with a lot of the NASCAR Cup teams. Not every series is like that, and you are free, uh, free to change these in any way you like, but there are a few very important things to keep in mind when setting up a series. First and foremost, we need to set up our teams. So we've got a total of 40 here, but you'll notice that 37 through 40 are left blank. That's done intentionally to leave room for you as the player. Of course, the player is able to expand to a total of four cars on their team in any particular series. So there are four slots available at the very bottom for exactly that purpose. Just remember that whenever you're ready to start your team in this particular series, you're going to need to head over to the manufacturers and teams, find the bottom of the list, and add your team here, determine which manufacturer you want to go with in this particular series, and your relative strength that you want to start with. Now, I say start with because you're going to have the option to have random modifiers applied over the course of your career, which can greatly change the performance of your team. But you need to choose a starting point. And that starting point, once again, can be found over here in the team performance area. Each series has its own tier, denoted by the yellow highlighted areas. NASCAR Cup will be levels one through five, just like we have with the drivers. Xfinity, as well as the Indy cars are six through 10, and so on as you work your way down. And then finally, 26 through 30 would be your dirt midget cars, as an example. But each series has its own tier of driver at different levels as well. So if we head back over to series relative performance, we would simply add our team car here for as many entries as we have at that particular moment. That will instantly pre-fill the current performance, the manufacturer name, the current performance for that manufacturer, all of that is pre-filled. The only things we need to add on this particular screen are the teams that we want to participate and our drivers. By default, this will be blank. So you will have your list of teams with no drivers. If you so choose, you can leave the drivers blank and it will pre-fill with default information that we talked about back on the manufacturers and team sheet. However, I greatly encourage you for the purposes of immersion to fill in drivers for as many of these slots as you would like. And of course, you have plenty of drivers available for hire on our drivers for hire tab, which is part of the original functionality of the career experience. There are plenty of drivers available 
in each of the series from all different levels of drivers, and I greatly encourage you to use those as much as possible. So now that we have filled in our team name and any of our drivers that we prefer, we're done here. Everything else we pre-fill and take care of itself. Now, at this point, we've created our teams, we've created our manufacturers, and we've set up a series. And of course, you'll want to do this for all of the series that you intend to run and simulate race results for and track points for, but you might be wondering, okay, I see current performance here for each of the three areas that we talked about, teams, manufacturers, and drivers, but how can we change those over time? Maybe you want to keep them static. Maybe you always want them to be just like that. Then you don't have to do anything else in that respect. However, let's say you're like me and you like things to flow, not just within each season, but over the course of an entire career. You don't want the strong teams to always be the same strength and always be finishing up front. What about the guys that are at the bottom? What about Spire Motorsports or Colic? Maybe you want them to have an opportunity to become stronger and compete for wins and top fives. Well, the next tab we're going to look at gives us exactly that ability. The dynamic adjustments sheet gives us the ability to ensure that our environment and the performance of all of our teams, manufacturers, and drivers is constantly changing. How dynamic do you want the environment to be? How often do you want these changes to take place? And how big do the changes need to be? That's all entirely up to you. Here you see teams, manufacturers, and drivers. And once again, we have the plus signs to denote that each of these areas can be collapsed as well as expanded. So let's go ahead and start out by expanding the teams area. So we click the plus sign there. I'm gonna scroll up because there is room for a total of 250 teams. And then as we scroll back up, you can see that currently there are a total of 117, including the default teams that you see here. So as we get back to the very top of this sheet, you'll see that we have our team number and that is going to match up with our original manufacturers and teams list. That's where the team numbers match up to. Then we have our team name. All of this pre-fills. You don't have to input anything manually on this screen for the teams, manufacturers, or the drivers. It's all taken from the other sheets. Then we will have our current relative performance but then we start with our initial performance. Again, all of this pre-fills from the other sheets. Your current relative performance is what's going to ultimately show up on the series relative performance for each of the areas. The initial performance is only used at the very beginning before you create the dynamic adjustments. So how do you create those adjustments and how large will the adjustments be? Well, the answer to how large the adjustments will be is answered right here with our min and max. Okay, right by default, your adjustment can be anywhere from a minus three, which means a loss in performance, to a plus three, which would be a gain in performance. You feel free to make changes to this, increase it, decrease it, however, you see fit. Now, how often should you make these adjustments? Well, that's completely up to you. I prefer to do them about every 10 races into a season. I come in, I make an adjustment, and then we move forward. And then over the course of an entire career, you're going to have a lot of adjustments in here. And some teams will be much better than they were originally. Other teams will be much worse. Most will be somewhere similar to their original. It's all up to the random adjustment. So now let's talk about how you create those adjustments. That is done here with a macro that runs when you press this button, the create adjustment button. And that reminds me of something that will happen to me every once in a while with Excel. As soon as I open up any spreadsheet, particularly any that, that contain a macro, 
uh, or a script that will run. And anywhere in the career experience where you see a button that you press, that's a macro. So every once in a while, when I open up a spreadsheet in Excel, toward the top of the screen, just above the area that you can see uh, in the top left-hand corner of your screen, there will be a message that says some sort of security warning that macros have been disabled, and then it'll give you a button if you want to enable the macros. Always choose enable macros with the career experience. Not necessarily for any and all spreadsheets, that'll be a personal decision, but for the career experience, you need to enable macros because without them, you won't have most of the functionality in version 2.0. So as soon as I create an adjustment, I'm going to press the button now. And for every team in the list, as we scroll down, they now have a randomized adjustment somewhere between negative three and plus three. And of course you can see some, like here at the bottom, got the most negative they could get. They lost three of performance. And then you'll also see some that gained three. So that's a spread of six percentage points or performance points that are possible with each adjustment. So like I said, over time, this can end up with huge differences. In some of my testing, I've seen teams that would lose over a period of multiple seasons, maybe 15 to 20 performance, while others would gain 15 to 20 performance. And that has a huge effect on the simulation of race results and ultimately seasons and point standings. So let's say that after we've done several adjustments, let's say that we want to reset this. We want to just go back to initial performance and we want to start all over, do a hard reset. That's what clear team adjustments is for. As soon as you hit this button, it is going to remove all of the adjustments that you've done, no matter how many you've done, whether it's one or a hundred adjustments. But just remember, before you do this, it is not reversible. Once you hit this button, the adjustments are gone. So as I hear clear, now we're back to square one. And you can do this anytime you want and as many times as you want. And as we move in and check out the other sections, they're going to work exactly the same. Once again, you see that there is plenty of room for any of the new teams, manufacturers, and drivers that you might have added to the other sheets. But just remember, you do not have to manually add anything to the dynamic adjustments sheet. Everything is pre-filled for you. So same thing here. I have kept the min and the max very much the same among all of these. You have your create adjustment button and your clear adjustment button. But once again, I just want to give you the warning that once you hit the clear, they're gone. There is no hitting the back button and undoing that. They're gone. So now finally we'll take a quick look at the drivers tab with a total of 500 drivers that there's room for. And right now there's only a total of 303, so you have plenty of room for additional drivers. And again, very much the same functionality here as well. And I kept these separate, so each section has their own buttons to create adjustments and clear adjustments so that you have the maximum number of options. You can choose to do the random adjustments for one or all three of these different areas. It's completely up to you. Now that we're complete with our setup, we have set up all of our teams, our manufacturers. We've even gone over to series relative performance and we've set up all of the different series that we want to run. Now it's time to actually simulate some races and simulate a season. The simulated seasons tab is located very close to the beginning of our list of sheets. As we move to the bottom of the page, you'll see that the simulated seasons tab is very close to your home tab, which is very close to the far left hand of our list of sheets. I did that because I figure you're going to be spending a lot of time on the simulated seasons tab, and I wanted it to be very handy near the beginning of the list and very easy to find. So at first glance, 
you'll notice that the simulated seasons looks very similar to what we saw in the series relative performance. We have our list of 10 series, and that's done on purpose because all of the information that you see on the simulated season screen is pre-filled for you. We've already done all of the setup for each of the series, the teams, the drivers, and the manufacturers. Now, we just get to sit back and enjoy. Okay, so all of this is pre-filled. We will have to do no manual entry of information. So once again, we'll choose the NASCAR Cup. And once again, you see the plus signs down the left-hand side. I'm going to choose the first one here for the NASCAR Cup. And now we get our first glimpse at the screen we're going to be using to simulate race results and full seasons. Now, as always, please make note of any and all of the red arrows you see in the top right-hand corner of a particular cell because this is going to contain notes and very important information, uh, either background information or helpful hints in using that particular area of the spreadsheet. In this case, I've got this one showing full time because it's going to give you a few things that you'll need to know, such as what are we going to use the simulated season sheet for? Here you will see a total of our 40 vehicles that will show up and all race results that are generated will always be 1 through 40, even if you leave these blank. So keep that in mind. That's just to keep things standard among all of the series, regardless of how many uh, race starters they might normally have in a particular series. So you have our team name and our drivers that pre-filled from the series relative performance screen, but there's another column that we haven't talked about yet, the tier, and we're going to come back to that in just a moment. I've been saving that one until we got this far along. But here on the screen, you're going to see season points that will track our points as we generate multiple races throughout the season, our season standing. And you're going to see multiple areas in here where you're going to have cells that are filled in blue. Anywhere you see that, it's a top five. Or in the case of race wins, anywhere there is a race win, you'll see the blue fill. You can always change that under conditional formatting if you prefer, but that's why it exists. It's just to make it a little bit easier to, for you to see, in this case, who are the top five in the series in points. The number of races we have run uh, for a particular season, wins, top fives, and top tens. So how do we go about using this? Well, we use our tier system. In each series, each of the teams will be scored on a tier system, one being the strongest, five being the lowest. So we go strongest to weakest, one to five. But you might be wondering, okay, how do we assign the, t the tiers one through five? How are these assigned? That goes back to our series relative performance. So once again, I'm going to expand the cup. The tier is to the far right. Your final tier is determined here, and it is a combination of the current performance for teams, current performance for manufacturer, and current performance for your drivers. Each of these have a percentage associated with them. Total percentage is 100% performance. How is that divided out? Well, you can change these numbers to anything you want. By default, I have 50% of your overall performance is determined by your manufacturer. How good is your equipment? Then 30% is determined by your team. And then finally, 20% of your overall performance is determined by your driver. Meaning that your manufacturer, you have no control over. Okay, especially if you choose to use the dynamic adjustments the manufacturer performance is completely out of your control. All you can do is simply change manufacturers if you decide that you need to go a different route. Personally, I prefer to stick with one through the good and the bad. It adds a lot of realism for me. But the team 
and the driver, well, we can affect those. Obviously, with the driver, we have a couple of different methods. We can either sign a better driver with a higher level. A driver level one is going to be better than a level two driver, who's going to be better than a level five driver, and so on. For, and of course, all of the driver levels are going to be relative to the series. Each series will have a different uh, selection of driver levels that are contained within. So that's going to affect our driver performance. So that's simple. We know how we can affect that. Uh, the other way we can do that is through upgrading our drivers. And we talked about that in the previous video for version 2.0. We could simply come over and hire a better driver or we can go to driver training and just like we did in the previous video, we could take our favorite driver here and we could simply upgrade them. We can purchase some upgrades here. And instead of having them as a level 30 driver, we can upgrade them to 29, 28, and so forth all the way to level one. So you've got options to improve in that area as well. But if we come back into our simulated seasons, or excuse me, back over to series relative performance for a moment, that just leaves the team performance. Well, how do we do anything with that? How can we improve our team performance other than what we're going to see on the dynamic adjustments should you decide to use it? And that brings me to the player adjustment tab, or excuse me, the column. Here, this is a manual adjustment. There is no formula for this. There's no button to hit here. This is simply a manual adjustment, and it gives you the ability to make some changes if things maybe have gone a bit too far under dynamic adjustments for a particular team. Maybe they've gotten a lot better than you want them to ever get. Maybe they've gotten a lot worse than you ever wanted them to get. Maybe you just have a particular slot that you want for them. And remember, this includes your team as well. You simply make an adjustment. So let's say that I decided that over time, track house racing has just gotten too strong. I want them to come down a little bit. Maybe I put a minus 10 in here. That's going to flow all the way across into ultimately our total score for this particular car. So the bigger the change you make, obviously, the bigger change that will happen to the total score. And you can see just by making a minus 10 adjustment, I have changed them to the 11th ranked team in this particular series. And now they are a tier two instead of a tier one. So that's how you can make adjustments manually outside of the normal dynamic adjustments. Now, something else that I want to mention specifically related to the player team. So once you have your team in here, let's say that you start off at the very bottom. Okay, let's say that you put yourself at the very bottom tier, which for the purposes of the Cup Series would be performance level of 60. And let's say that you, over time you want to improve your team. You could come in here and put, say, a 10. And that would easily improve your performance. But what I like to do with that is pair that increase. Let's say we put, once again, on our team this time, we put an increase of 10. What I like to do is pair that with a change on the series screen so that we have a financial investment as well. And where we would do that is we would come back to, again, whichever screen you are using, whichever series you're using for that particular one, you would come over to the relative performance upgrades. And then I would put performance gain of 10. That's what we used over on the series relative performance. And then I would simply put under completed. I would put a purchase there and it will pre-fill an amount. Now, just for our purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and pre-fill cup so that as we scroll back over, you can see that a performance gain of 10 is expensive in the cup series. It will vary from series to series, but each performance gain is 250,000. 
So if you want to increase by 10, that's two and a half million dollars. And that is something that can make your career much more immersive, I have found, and really help out with the level of immersion and fun for me. Again, that is something completely up to you. You could simply come over here and put 50 in here and immediately jump up quite a bit of team performance and not put anything over here on the series tab and it not cost you a dime. That's completely up to you. Again, one of my main goals here is to give you as many options as I possibly can. So now that we've spent quite a bit of time back on the series relative performance, doing some explaining on where the tiers come from, let's head back over to the simulated seasons and continue on with our discussion here. So now that we know the tiers for each of the teams and how they are determined, now let's talk about generating some race finishes and running a season. The button in column K, the top button, labeled Generate Race Finish is going to do exactly that. I click the button, it generates a race finish. Once again, in blue uh, fill for each cell, you'll see the top five to make them easy to pick out. And we can scroll down the list to see all of those. You also notice that our season points are starting to fill out as well as our season standing, the number of races, wins. This is very important. You can see, okay, we know who won this race. Joey Logano won race number one. Also, who's getting top fives and top tens? Who's very consistent? You can see all of that information right here in the main area. So let's go ahead and generate a few race finishes. Some of these buttons will take a little bit to run, such as uh, the dynamic adjustments for the drivers, since there's so many drivers available. So just give it a second if it's taking a moment. So now we've gone five races into the season. We have, at this point, five different winners. You can see the season standings. You can see the season points. Now, how long is the season? How many races do we run in a complete season? The answer is, it's up to you. There is a maximum number of races set at 50. So if we scroll across, you can see a total of 50 races are available, meaning that the maximum season length is 50, but you can run anywhere from one up through 50. It is completely up to you. And we're gonna look at some sample schedules uh, here on uh, the career experience here in just a few moments, but keep in mind, it is completely up to you how long each season is. But whenever you've run the number of races that you want to be a complete season, then you can see your standings, number of points, wins, and so forth. So you'll know who the champion is. If we ended right now, it would be Joey Logano in the Cup Series. So let's say that you've reached the end of a season. You've run all the, the uh, points races that you want to for this particular season, and you're ready to start over. That's what the clear race results button is for. Just like we talked about on the dynamic adjustments tab, be careful before you hit this because this will not be undone. It cannot be undone. So once we hit clear race results, there is no undo button. If we go to the top of the screen, you cannot undo that. They are gone. So make sure that you write down any information that you want. At this particular point in time, there is no history screen. So once you reset, all the results are gone. You're back to square one and you're ready for season number two. So now that we, we've talked about how we're going to go through the entire process. We started out, if we scroll across a little bit here, we started out on manufacturers and teams. We decided if we're going to use the provided teams and manufacturers, or maybe we're going to scroll to the bottom of this list and we're going to add our own. And then... From there, we talked about uh, driver training. We've talked about series relative performance in setting up our different series. We've talked about a way to create a dynamic environment through our dynamic adjustments tab. And then, of course, finally, 
We're simulating races and we're simulating seasons under the simulated seasons tab. But now let's tie all of this back in to our original functionality of the career experience. So once you have generated some races, you've reached the end of the season, you're going to want to get all of this information for your particular team. Once you add your team here at the bottom, you're going to want to get all of your finishes back into the series screen so that we can deal with the financial aspects of running a race team and completing our racing experience. So for that, I'm going to be making a separate video on a couple of very simple and easy ways to copy and paste race results onto the series screen. I want to make that a separate video uh, because I think it's something that will throw a lot of people off. It's not as simple as just saying, you know, a right click, a copy, and then go over to the series screen and do a right click and a paste or a control C and control, you know, and all that. It's not that simple. There's an extra step or two that you need to take to ensure that they go into the right area. And we're going to talk about that in our third and final video here. The final new addition to the career experience that we're going to talk about today are the sample series schedules. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice the sample series schedules are toward the right hand side or toward the end of the list of our different tabs or sheets right next to the manufacturers and teams. So if you head over here, you'll see that I have uh, a few different schedules to some of the more popular series in here. These are simply samples. Some of these are very close to the real life schedules for these particular series. Others, I've made some adjustments, but beyond that, I've put them in a format that you can do a simple copy and paste and use them in any of your series screens. So also you'll notice we have NASCAR Cup, Xfinity and Trucks, and then as we move our way over to the right, we've also got a sample ARCA schedule, the asphalt super late models, and then a dirt schedule. I actually use this schedule, which totals the maximum of 50 races. I use it for all of the dirt series, and each of these have their own list of uh, events, tracks, and so forth. Now, some of the names of the tracks I have condensed uh, to make things a little bit easier so that you don't have to widen each of the, uh, the rows out quite so much in columns. But then you'll notice that each one of these, if you decide to use them, you have some color coding in here. Any of the races you see in red for the different series, those are crown jewel events, which means their payouts are going to be much higher than your normal standard events. And you can see that here in the second column, we've got our race numbers. We've got our type of event. Most of these are going to be standard events, but the ones in red will be crown jewels. Any that you see in blue, again, for any of the series, will be special events. These pay out more than the standard events, but not as much as the crown jewels. Now, as always, you are free to change any of this information or simply ignore this entirely, but I did want to give you some example schedules that you can simply copy and paste over into the series screen. So let's talk for a moment about how you would exactly go about doing that. So you would simply grab race number one, and I'm going to grab all 36 races in the cup schedule. I'm going to do a right click and a copy. Of course, for those of you who are used to using the keyboard shortcuts, those obviously work as well. But for demonstration purposes, I'm using the mouse. So we've now copied the entire schedule. I'm going to hop over to series one, which for me, from earlier in the video, we've already placed cup in here, but you can use it in any of the series. I'm going to go to where I want race number one. Then I'm going to do a right click and you have two options here. I recommend doing a straightforward copy paste. You could do a paste values if you wanted to, but that gets rid of the pretty colors. And I like the colors to remind me as we're coming up on each race, which ones have the higher payout. So I'm going to do a standard copy paste here. 
And then of course we will widen out the column. And now you have a full schedule for the cup cars. The one last thing that I would add to the bottom is since we're running a full schedule, why not add a championship to the bottom? That way you can put in under your race finish results, you can put in your overall finish in the season championship. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully it provided a lot of information for you. But remember, there is a lot of information available to you throughout the spreadsheet, starting with the tips and starting guide. You'll find a lot of information available about the update, what was added, what was changed here, as well as when you move throughout the different uh, sheets or tabs, you'll find the red arrows in some of the cells. Definitely mouse over those and take a look because there is a lot of important information to be found there. But once again, thank you guys so much for joining me, and I hope you have a lot of fun with version 2.0 of the career experience.